What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you had a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH, this shit was a hot mess. <laughs> Where do I begin? First of all, who the hell is Trina's mother? So we now know who her dad supposedly is, Taggart. But who's her mom? And that's what Curtis wanted to know. Because you already know Curtis wasn't letting this go. He wanted to know if Jordan was the mother. And Jordan was like, hell no. She was like, no, she only got one child, which is TJ. And she says she never had any sexual relationship or romantic relationship with Taggart. But see, with Jordan, you never know. You just never know what she's telling the truth when she's lying. You just never really know, especially with all the lies that she's currently telling. And my thing is, if you fear that you and Taggart are targets, why would you not fear that Curtis would be a target too, or TJ, for that matter, for whatever dirt that you and Taggart did years ago? I mean, two of the members of your four member team are now dead. It has something to do with a dangerous man, Cyrus Renault. So who's to say he wouldn't come after your family or you? He's obviously coming after you and Taggart next. Who's to say that he's not coming after your family? You see what he did to the Corinthoses, even though she doesn't know that that was Cyrus that did that. But still, it's like, what makes you think that your family is so safe? So why not tell your damn husband, who's a private investigator, used to be in law enforcement. Why not tell him what the hell is going on? Like, what's the deal? He can protect you. He can protect himself. He can help protect you. So why keep this secret from him? You know damn well that he would go through hell, fire and brimstone for you. We already established that. I mean, look what he did just to get you a new kidney. The laws that he broke. He's broke several laws to get you that kidney. What makes you think he wouldn't do it again to protect you from Cyrus or whoever's coming after you? And we all know it's Cyrus. And that's exactly why Jordan went to go see Cyrus. And they were sitting there being coy with each other about the past. And Cyrus even mentioned how TJ must be in medical school now. Of course he knows that. Of course he knows that information. You think he's not keeping tabs on her? Of course. Cyrus is clearly someone who does his homework on his enemies. And like he said, his biggest mistake was trusting Jordan. And he makes very few mistakes. And I know some people in the comments said yesterday how... Um, his business associates were going to be pissed at him because of the $20 million shipment that Sonny destroyed. But who's to say that those people wouldn't come after Sonny and Jason for messing up their shipment? Whatever beef that they have with Cyrus has nothing to do with his associates or his business partners. You got beef with Cyrus, come after Cyrus, but don't mess with other associates' business and their money. Because when you do that, now you got beef with them. So Sonny and Jason may think that they're smart and they think that they got the upper hand, but you never know what his business partners might do because you just cost them $20 million. So who's to say they won't come after the Corinthos organization? That's a whole new sleuth of enemies that you just created. Because you know those two thugs of Cyrus's are probably going to snitch to the business partners and tell them who set that damn warehouse on fire. Duh. Sonny and Jason probably ain't think about that one. Now did they? Nope. Um, but Sonny knows that, yeah, they hurt Cyrus, but like he said, they didn't hurt him enough because he basically relayed to Jason a conversation that Cyrus and he had where Cyrus said that he had personal ties to poor Charles. Now all they need to do is figure out what those personal ties are. Who is he talking about? What or who is he talking about? That's all they need to figure out now. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad Taggart decided to tell Curtis the truth about what was going on. He wants Curtis to know the full truth so that way he can protect himself. Because why keep keeping him in the dark? Like, you think that's smart? That's not smart. He's just going to keep digging around till he find out what the hell y'all up to. And Jordan should know that Curtis is very capable of figuring out what they're up to. Like, he's proven it already. He's a smart dude. He's already following, you know, Taggart around and stuff. But it was the way Taggart looked at Curtis. Like, he looked at him with this evil ass looking look. Like, you must be wanting his wife or something. Like, why else would you be so hostile towards him? You know what I'm saying? Usually you would be cool, calm, and collective if you ain't got nothing to hide. But you're way too aggressive when it comes to Curtis. 
like, obviously you're hiding something. And hopefully Jordan don't tell him no BS to my, oh, trust me, I'm your wife. How he, how he supposed to trust you? You keeping all these damn secrets from him. How he supposed to trust you? I wouldn't trust you to cut my lawn. So why would he trust you? Trust goes both ways. Like you want him to trust you. You should trust him enough to tell him what's bothering you and what the hell is going on. Trust is a two way street. Marriages don't work if you ain't got trust and communication. If you ain't got that, you need to trust your, that your husband has your back and you need to communicate to him what the hell is going on. So he wouldn't think that you're out here screwing around. Like you can sit there and tell them all day long, oh, I'm not cheating, I'm not cheating. But your actions are saying something different. He may not have caught you in the act of cheating, but you're having these shady meetings. You're doing this dirt behind his back. You're having these private conversations. Like you're just doing shady shit behind his back. So, of course, he's going to think the worst. What husband would in hell wives out there think that about their husbands? You know what I mean? Like, come on, you're keeping out information. Like I would have thought that same damn thing. Like, can you blame him? Um, so anyway, even Trina was, you know, on high alert about Taggart's behavior because she never seen Marcus act like that. Like she's never seen him act like that. So she was a little alarmed by it, trying to figure out what was going on between him and Curtis. And of course, he wouldn't tell her anything. Um, but I am wondering, though, who is her mom? Like, that's a big question mark. And you could tell, though, Cyrus ain't nothing to play with. Like, clearly, he's pissed off. And he obviously has a score to settle with Taggart and Jordan because he even talked about their old DEA days and stuff. And he talked about how she used to be his right, his right hand or whatever, you know, so, you know, he want revenge. So they all better watch their backs. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. So Nell continues to get crazier and crazier and crazier by the damn second. So this heifer has the baby. And now, you know, she's taking all this time to sit here and BS around when she should have easily just ran. But yet she want to be a dumb dumb and stick around. So, of course, that gave Michael and Chase time to get there um, to stop her. This crazy witch came up, concocted this whole dumbass story. She told Michael Brad stole their baby. She was delirious the night that she gave birth. <laughs> she really tried to deny any responsibility for the baby switch. She tried to make it. She put all the blame on Brad. I say you have got to be kidding me. And Michael wasn't buying none of it. Everything that she was trying to sell him and Chase, they were not buying. Even Michael told her he was like, she was like, oh, you believe Brad? He said, you're damn right. He said, you damn right. I believe Brad. Because one, he knows how Nell operates. He knows she's slick. She's a liar. All she do is fucking lie. He knows this. He's not stupid. He know that's all that heifer do. Lie, 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 lie. That's all she do. Lie. She don't know how to tell the truth. She wouldn't know the truth if it bit her on the nose. That's all that girl do. Lie. So he wasn't buying none of her BS. And I don't blame him. I wouldn't have bought it either. And I thank God that he didn't. He wasn't buying none of her foolishness. Um, He just, you know, he wasn't with the shit. He was like, I know you're lying. Give me my son. And of course, Nell ass was arrested. <laughs> Her parole is probably going to be revoked. Um, you know, I'm just glad that this is all over. Michael got his kid. We could say bye to the storyline for right now. Like, I'm just super happy about that. So anyway, moving on from that, you know, Chase had to get Willow to the hospital and stuff. You know, she was trying to remember what happened. And that's when she figured out that Nell, you know, her and Nell had gotten to a fight. But, you know, Chase had to calm her down, let her know, like, everything good. We all to the good. So, you know, Sonny showed up, of course, to the apartment because Sam called Jason to tell him what the hell was going on. And, you know, of course, Sonny was happy, you know, Michael got his kid back. But, of course, Sonny is confused because he doesn't know all the details about how the hell Brad ended up with Michael's son. So, you know, they got to fill him in on the details. Um... I feel so bad for Willow when she finds out that that child is not her child. Like, I feel super bad for her. Like, I know her mental stability is just going to be cracked. I already know. Like, she's not probably going to mentally be able to handle it. Like, she might need a stint in Shady Brook. Like, seriously. Not even a laugh because it's like, damn. 
mm -mm -mm. protecting a child that she thought was hers and turn, come to find out her child actually died, I wouldn't be able to take that. You would have to lock me up in some mental institution because I wouldn't be able to take it. So anyway, moving on from that. So, you know, everybody's still dumping on Brad because they want to know who the hell else was involved in this whole baby switch. I was super surprised when Brad didn't throw Julian under the bus because I was expecting him to do it. That's some shit I would have did. I don't care. If I'm going down, your ass is going down too. You're going down too. I won't be the only one in this bitch going down. We going this whole shit gonna go down. I'ma sink this entire bitch. Like that's what I would be doing. To hell with it. If I'm going down, the jig is up. <laughs> if I'm going to jail and about to be handcuffed, you're gonna be handcuffed with me, buddy. Accessory after the fact. I'm just saying. It is what it is. Um so, you know, he basically covered up, didn't tell them about Julian's involvement. Um, you know, Julian basically tried to open up his big mouth, talking about, oh, well, you know, people do things. And Julian talking about, oh, people make mistakes. And he was he thought he was protecting you. Julian, he didn't snitch on you. Shut up. And that's probably the reason why Julian was trying to come up with excuses for Brad, because Brad didn't snitch on him. Um, that's why Julian was quiet as a church mouse, even on yesterday episode for the most part, because he was trying to, you know, not say nothing that would, you know, show his hand <laughs> and prove that his ass was involved. <laughs> Smart move on his part, but we all know it ain't gonna last because we know Brad. Brad is a smarmy little bastard. And now that he's being arrested for kidnapping, you already know Brad gonna try to get Julian to help him get out this mess. There is no way in hell he not gonna call Julian for help. There is nobody else in that town that's going to help him. Julian's the only one that could possibly try and help him legally get out of this mess. Probably by paying for his lawyer or something, you know. He's going to try to get Julian help. He definitely will. So Julian ain't out the woods just yet. Like, bruh, you got a long way to go. Um. So at least Carly acknowledged the fact that her and, you know, Sonny and all them kept Michael from AJ. But my whole thing is, even though it was dead ass wrong for her to keep Michael from AJ, that situation is a little bit different than this situation. It's it's different. It's still wrong, but it's different. It's not the same situation. Um, not even remotely. Um, but I just cannot believe this heifer really tried to throw Brad under the bus. I was like, damn, damn, bitch, you cold. <laughs> But Brad, should, he should suspect it, though. I mean, you know now. She's a survivor. She's a cockroach. She's going to do whatever she can to survive. That's what she does. Um, Lucas was just totally disgusted by Brad. Like, he did not want to look at him. He just did not want to talk to him no more. Didn't want to look at him. Didn't want nothing. All I could tell Lucas, get ready to sign them papers. File them. Call Alexis. Filed him divorce papers. Get some alimony from him. Do whatever you got to do. Michael, file a civil suit. Even though, you know, Michael don't need the coin. But still, file your civil suit. Get your money. I'm just saying, like, I would make Brad's life a living hell if I were them. I really would. For the hell that he caused everybody, I would make his life miserable. Miserable. Even if he doesn't go to prison, I would make every day that he get to be in Port Charles a living nightmare. Like, he would wish he did go to prison. <laughs> he really would. By the time I would have been done with him, he would have wished. But anyway, that's pretty much the entire episode, I want to say. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. I will see y'all all later. Hope you all have a great night. Peace.